In the previous video, I made the base and clamping nut for the finger plate tool. In this video, I finished that build by making the drilling jig bushings, the knurled thumb wheel, as well as this clamping finger. The clamping finger is such a cool looking part. I really like those chamfered edges. I'll need to make sure I get the depth of cut right for it all to work. Anyway, first things first, it needs to be marked out on a strip of mild steel plate. The symmetry of the part means that if I mark off the various dimensions along a centre line, I can then construct the rest of the shape using an engineer's square and a protractor. I really must get around to buying some radius gauges for marking out. In the meantime, this wash will do the trick. You can see I'm opening up four holes. The two outer ones are for later threading and the two inner ones will form the end curves of the internal slot. And these threaded holes are where the lifting screw is inserted to provide the clamping force. To make the slot, I started out with an undersized slot mill, and then once I'd broken through, I moved the cutter closer to the line on each side to bring the slot to size. So that's the inside cutting complete. Now for the edges. The van saw takes care of most of the waste stock. And I use the belt sander and the filing machine to bring it closer to the line. I've left it just a little short of the line to allow for a bit of hand finishing later. Now for those chamfered surfaces. First a mark out, and then it's off to the mill. This part is a bit like the base in that the surface of the raw stock is a bit rough, so I gave it a bit of time on some 240 grit paper to clean it up and leave a good surface finish. Now 
and that's the clamping finger complete. You can see how it can be swung around the stud to bring either end into use. Now for the lifting screw thumb wheel. This one was made very much like the clamping nut. I started with the knurl, trimmed off the end, and then drilled and threaded the centre. Once it's parted off it becomes a bit hard to hold, so I used this cap screw as a mandrel and did the rest of the turning while it was on that. I used a graver to form the dome. And then I gave it a very light touch with some emery paper. A bit of Loctite holds that threaded rod in place. And that's the tool basically done. All I need to finish the job is a set of bushings for the cross hole jig. Now the bushings are basically just a shouldered cylinder with a hole drilled down the centre matching whatever size drill you intend to use for the cross hole. So I picked four sizes that I know I'm going to need in the near future and drilled them out. This one is 1.3 millimetres. And I figured I'd better stamp them with their sizes so I don't lose track of what I've got. Okay, let's give it a go. I've faced off the end of the rod to have a look at the hole. As best as I can tell, it's where it should be. The drilling feels quite stable and the tool's very easy to hold. And I can see this tool will get a lot of use on the belt sander and filing machine too, holding those small parts. If I'm working on something that tends to grab like brass, I can lock it down on the vise and know that it's going to sit tight. This is a great little tool. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. And if you're new to ClickSpring, thanks for dropping by. Hit subscribe to get regular project videos and don't forget to like, share and leave me a comment. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next video.